One, go. Hey, so we're down here in the basement. You can see the ice storage tanks behind me and the pumps are behind me. We'll talk about those in a minute. And what we're looking at is the part of the system diagram where the water's moved and the ice is generated. So this is everything down in the basement level on that system diagram we're looking at. And specifically, the water comes back from the roof here. Some of it gets diverted to the tanks and that, through that line, which comes back to this three-way valve. The rest of it bypasses the tanks. So right there is the tank bypass and heads over and hits these pumps. And there's two pumps in parallel. You can see two drops beside each other. And one of the interesting things about these pumps is, and this is a little commissioning lesson, a little value engineering design review sort of lesson. These pumps have strainer on them. That's what this is. It's a sort of a Y strainer, a blow down valve. And you can't tell with the insulation, but there's actually a suction diffuser inside there. And a suction diffuser is a strainer in addition to a way to turn the water into the inlet of the pump and keep the flow straight. So the reality is, you didn't need these strainers, which are an expensive part, they're a maintenance item, but once they're installed, there's no real savings in taking them out. So a good time for somebody to have noticed this would have been when they're reviewing the drawings, looking at you know, the details of the pump piping and saying, hey, do we need both of those things? It would save some money and you know, actually a better system to save a little energy because they're pressure drop. So we're going to shift the camera, and then I'm going to show you some details about the pump, and then we're going to show you an interaction between the pump and the system. Okay, we switched over to the side of the pump so you can see a little bit more of the details of how it's piped. And here, right in this area, is where that strainer was that I was poking, pointing at before. And this is just a butterfly valve. It's the actuator on the service valve on the suction side of the pump. The water's flowing this way into the pump and then out of the pump. This is a circuit setter, which is a balancing valve and also serves as the discharge service valve on this pump. And you can see that it has a calibrated scale. Right now it's wide open. And if we're going to move that, we want to mark where it was on that scale, either actually make a little mark or make a note so we can get back to that position. And right now we know it's wide open, so in a little bit I'm going to throttle the pump and we'll just bring it back to full open when we're done. Um, on this pump, we're set up to actually measure the suction and the discharge pressure. Um, and then these copper lines are actually going up to a proof of operation switch, a differential pressure switch that proves the pump's running because there's a pressure difference across it. Um, and we can hook gauges up across here, which let us see the pressure on the pump. And that pressure varies as the flow in the system varies. Because you remember from our discussion in class, there's a relationship between flow and pressure for any given pump. It's a function of the impeller size. And so by measuring the pressure here, we can actually use the pump curve to figure out the flow on the system. But the other thing we're going to demonstrate right now is as the flow and pressure changes, the load on the motor changes and that changes the slip. In other words, the speed of the motor relative to the synchronous field varies as the pump loads and unloads. And so um, what I have set up over here is a little digital tachometer that's just basically pointed at the shaft of the pump and it just sees a reflection off the shaft and so it can measure speed that way. That's the pump motor back there and the coupling guard and I'm just looking at a part of the shaft right between the motor and the coupling guard. So I'm going to go start the pump Ryan's going to zoom in on that, on that uh, tack, and you'll see it run in probably about 1747 or so RPM. And then when I come back, I'm going to throttle this pump right here at this discharge valve. And in doing that, I'll unload the pump. And since the pump's unloaded, there needs to be less slip to deliver the power. And so you actually see the motor speed up several RPM as I throttle the pump. And then it'll slow down again as I open the valve open, which just sort of shows all this stuff's interacting. Now, we have the, we have the uh, chiller turned off upstairs because if I no flowed the chiller, I'd trip it out on the safety. So, and that's another interaction. The commission's all about interactions. So while Ryan's zooming in, I'm going to walk in and turn the pump on. You'll hear the noise of the pump starting here. Not real loud. Now, probably it's running. About 1746, 1747 RPM right now. So I'm going to take my trusty crescent wrench and I'm going to throttle this pump. In other words, I'm going to close the discharge valve, which is safe to do on a centrifugal pump for short periods of time. So here I go. That will reduce the flow, and I think you're probably seeing the uh, speed in. There's no flow, and I think the speed increased up into the like, what is it, 
about 1778. From the 1740s almost up to 1780. It's synchronous speeds at 1800. The only power that motor is delivering now is the power that's being taken out by bearing friction and by the motor armature spinning in air, which is an aerodynamic load, by the impeller spinning in water, even though it's not moving water, there's resistance to flow. Now, as I open this valve back up again, you probably hear the flow picking up. I'm not sure how sensitive the mic is. But you're going to see the pump start to load up and the speed will drop. You can even hear the pitch of the motor change. I don't know if the mic's good enough to catch on that. But... Okay, now I'm back open again. So, what you just saw was the interaction between the flow in the system and the pump and the pump and the motor and the utility grid. It all ripples out. If you had good enough meters at the power plant, you would have seen that happen. We're seeing it on lines KW coming into the building. So that concludes our little demonstration, and uh, we'll back up to the classroom now. Okay. All right. I think there's a way to play it into my computer, and I can capture it.